Good morning, folks. Today we've got some perturbed solar wind and a geomagnetic storm I don't expect to last very long. We've got some news, notes, and more, but we begin, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com. And first, there does not appear to be significant CME material ejected from the surge at the northern tip of that coronal hole. We saw it yesterday. The star was relatively quiet in the Earth-facing positions. The only story right now is in the solar wind, and NASA and NOAA were super quick to call this jolt you see in orange and yellow the CME they were so expecting to impact later today. So is it or isn't it? Remember, we didn't think that CME was coming our way. Well, arriving a full day early and yet managing to not hit with any significant speed makes one wonder how it got here so quickly. The character presented so far is a jump up in density in orange, and then when it drops out, then we get the faster particles and phi angle flux in blue. That sounds like a weak coronal hole stream and sector boundary interactions, as CMEs have their fastest particles arriving near the start of the impact not after the slower ones. But that is what we see with coronal holes. Either way, it was very weak, and despite the weakness, though, we remain in the fall vulnerability period and a geomagnetic storm is underway. It is worth noting that I did expect to potentially see umbral jet contribution to the solar wind this week. The sunspot plasma bullets are missing Earth now, but three to five days ago, as the sunspot swung in and passed the Earth-facing longitudes, it was firing just like it is now. A recent study showed up to a 3% solar wind contribution from jets, and given how small and tight they are, that's like a little CME in and of itself. Anyway, while we watch for faster particles today, there isn't any solar flaring and isn't much to expect from the sunspots. Big guy down south has completely tapped out. Despite the production of a geomagnetic storm, as I said, I don't expect it to last very long, and we could still see increased seismicity if it drops out before the next stream arrives. Yesterday on Twitter, you saw the areas that were diminishing in strength and one we extended a day. We can just about take the South Pacific Alert away now and shift it to the Earth spot at the Indonesia Bend and perhaps even a bit towards the faults that are just off the screen. Top articles today include lunar impacts. Apparently, there are about 33% more impacts of late, making new craters, and they think this changes the circumstances of certain space travel. China fluoride pollution is utterly horrible, but not unexpected. After all, they can't expect the United States to buy all the poison they make to put on our teeth. Ugh. And with news sparse from parts of the Ukraine, you might not have heard about the hurricane-force winds that caused a lot of damage in Odessa and claimed one life. So folks, today we're watching solar wind to see how this storm progresses. If we get a breather, we're looking to the alert zones for increased seismicity, and otherwise just monitor the pressure and radar forecast for your local areas. U.S. Northwest, here comes that former typhoon. We've also got shots of our star to close. It's 4.20 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.